Say hi, fisherman. There's the fisherman. Show us how you catch a fish, Sam. How do you do the reel? Well, you just put a bait on on the fishing rod and then put it back on on the boat and mm -hmm. then okay. throw it like a baseball. Uh huh. And then what happens? Then it goes far off, far, far, far into the water. Mm -hmm. And then a fish might come. And if you sh if you want more line, you just shake the lock, the rod a little. Very funny. <laughs> Did you hear that? Or let me turn it up. Here's the twins, Sammy and Daddy. I started fishing off uh, a couple of the piers that are located here in South Florida and I met a number of my friends that are still friends today. So we're talking about, you know, 45 to 48 years ago, meeting some of the kids in that, at that time that I'm still uh, friends with and have relationships and still fish with today. Um, one of them was my friend Chuck Doria. So my name is, is Chuck Doria, and I was born in Hollywood, Florida, actually uh, 60 years ago. I've been living here ever since in Hallandale. Took a love to the ocean since I was knee-high to a grasshopper, actually. My cousins and uh, my friends all, you know, that were older than me, all used the ocean. They fished, they surfed, they spearfished, and I got right in the mix with it. And that's where it all started. So I had a love for it. I, you know, they call it fish and fever, and I caught it. They call it fish and fever for a reason, and I did catch it. It used to make me money. I used to commercial fish, but uh, 
that's kind of like over with around here. It gives me a purpose. It's just like anything else in life. So whatever gives you a purpose, other than family, something to do and something to enjoy yourself. Fishing is uh, what lights me up, you know, it would make my world turn. I can't see not fishing. If there wasn't fishing, you know, it's kind of like eating. You gotta, I gotta do it. <laughs> One thing about fishermen, uh, they have a drive, man, a drive to catch fish. A real fisherman just never quits, never quits. Always wants to do some type of fishing and want to catch some type of fish. It just never ends. Well, I just thought that um, you should be exposed to the freedom and, and what it feels like to basically have a, a day where you don't have to interact with a bunch of people, you don't have to be on land, um, you get on the ocean and you're away from all of that. And that's the kind of peace that you'll have to find for yourself in whatever it is you do. Once you're away from everybody and you're on your own and you're sitting in the ocean and even if you're not catching anything, it's like they say, you know, a bad day fishing is a be is better than a good day working. Um, that's the peace that it provides, that you don't have to think about anything else except the moment. see if we can catch some bait so we can go fishing. Um, it takes a little while to get where we're going, but hopefully there'll be some bait around and it won't take us too, too long. And see how things go. It's a lot of work for one person, too. When you have another person, they can help you, but um, when you only have yourself, you've got to do everything yourself and load, unload fish, load, unload ice, all of it. Catch bait, run the boat. It's a 
lot of work for a 62-year-old man. Um, I'm not sure if it's too much work. But it's something that you love to do and you do it for as long as you can. And then uh, just be happy with all the, the time that you were able to spend out here that most people couldn't. I guess when you started fishing, it was what? Um, you were probably six or seven. But before that, it was really, you know, it, we caught some fish, but it wasn't as good as when I was younger. When I was younger, it was, when I first started, it was good. Very limited regulation. Now they're on top of everybody. <clears throat> you have to have a license for everything. This is going back in the early 70s when there was pretty much no regulation. And we've caught some pretty good fish, uh, sailfish and wahoo and dolphin. So we were able to, uh, to go do what we wanted and go on some crazy adventures. And uh, we, we had a lot of fun and there was nobody to bother you. Like I said, no heat, no, the population was low. It was like country living at the beach. There's a tarpon. 70, 80 pound, and there's snook, probably 15 pounds, we'll catch a lot of those. Hammerhead, we released the hammerheads, released most of the fish. Uh, the sharks, we all, re we release them all, basically. We've, we've taken a couple of bull sharks, uh, another big bull shark, another nice hammerhead. Them shark jaws there. From a Mako shark my buddy caught, uh, which is, was an 800 pound fish, and that was not off of the beach. Okay. <laughs> this thing takes a bite out of you, cuts you right in half. So the difference between a really good day and a so-so day is this sitting that we're doing right now. If it was really good, we wouldn't be sitting, we'd be catching. Birded. 
birded. Well, things have changed. Um, a lot of boats, a lot of competition. And even when they're not competing for the same amount of fish or the same fish that you are, um, <clears throat> all that boat traffic influences the schools of fish. They are, um, they do get scared of noise and too much boat traffic. And obviously if there's pollution, I'm sure that has an effect and tearing up the reef. Um, <clears throat> there's people that anchor here, but you know, they, they've been anchoring here for years and years and years. So it does tear up the reef. So, you know, we're dealing with all the people, and the runoff and the um, pollution from them. But things are, you know, changing. There's lots more people here. Most of these buildings didn't exist when I was growing up here. Um, there's some that were here initially, but most of them are not. A lot of them are condominiums, all of these right here. There's some that were taller buildings, but not gigantic buildings. Now they knock down the, the taller buildings that were maybe 20 stories and they built something 50 stories or so. You know, there, it was very, uh, wasn't much population when I was a little kid here on Houndo Beach. And um, there were none of these buildings. You see all these high rises. It was all natural dunes. There was only the diplomat, and it was very small. daybreak and um, fish were offshore bucking the minnows. They were like uh, 300 yards offshore and uh, can't cast them from the beach. So plan B, we went and got the paddle board, the kayak, and it got a little late on us, but we did get on them a couple of times and we caught some Spanish mackerel in the two to four pound range and caught a nice yellowtail and uh, had a little fun, but there, we had got on it like an hour earlier, or half hour earlier. We had a little more success, but um, we rolled with the punches and went to play up in and, and, and had a lot of fun. No, I can't say that. No, because you're trying. If you're catching, you're out there all day, and if you're not catching, you're trying to catch all day. So. I don't know if there's a such thing as a waste of a day. You know, we have a certain period of time here. What's a waste of a day? We're, we're born and we're gonna, gonna be gone. So I don't know, I don't really say a wasted day. A bad day or not so great of a day, but a wasted day, not so much. Not fishing anyway. <laughs> Cause you're trying to catch and you're hoping. Don't do it. It's over. It's too tough a lifestyle. 
great fun, but over time it's it's uh, it's gotten the fishing hasn't gotten any better. It's gotten worse, and it's just a lot of work. It's you're not gonna get rich doing it. You better love it. If you don't love it, you better not do it. Think you'll be fishing now? Or you got to I'm not sure. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do. I'll probably fish for a little while. How about you? I don't know about you, but I'm really fucking tired. I'm pretty beat up. Hopefully that won't make the final cut, what I just said. It, it might. That's the, the summary, summary of everything. I'm really fucking tired. 